Well, hello everyone. I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing? Maybe I sound a little different because I am in my hotel room in Orlando, Florida at the owners meetings. Just finished our first show. So this is Sunday. We're on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then back home Wednesday night. Got in last night later than I would have liked with some delays and spring break and all that good stuff, but whatever. Weather's great. Can't complain. Um, hopefully to learn some things while we're here. But I have a couple things I've been kind of keeping on the back burner that I want to talk about a little bit just before we get rolling here, you know, get rolling into more offseason stuff and more moves. So Ryan Tannehill with Arthur Smith, he spent two full – during the, the entire 2019 and 2020 seasons, I have some kind of alarming numbers of what Tannehill did with Smith. Now, I want to remind you, Ryan Tannehill was a mid-first-round pick of the Dolphins, and sort of in a Kenny Pickett manner at the time, the Dolphins dumped him to Tennessee, and I mean dump, for I think it was a fifth-round pick. You know, just kind of get him out of here. We're going to move on. And I think that's when they drafted Tua, give or take. It was that timeline. And Tennessee took on Tannehill to match with Marcus Mariota with the thought of, Eh, maybe Tannehill will do some stuff. Who knows? Mariota is going to be the future. Second pick overall. That's not the way it worked. I mean, Tannehill had ability. But at this point, I wouldn't say it was a flop when he and Arthur Smith got to working with each other. But he was an afterthought or considered more of a bust. But of the, there were 41 quarterbacks with 300 or more dropbacks over the 2019 and 2020 season, all of which Tannehill was with Arthur Smith. So where do you think Tannehill ranked over those two seasons amongst those 41? EPA per drop back. So just every time he dropped back, how efficient was he? You know, points over expectation. Second in the whole league. Second. Completion percentage over expected. Second. Pro football focus pass grade. Okay, it's a different way of looking at it. Whole different realm. Third amongst 41. Passer rating. Old school passer rating from when I was a kid. 110.6. Second. This is Ryan Tannehill. This isn't Pat Mahomes. This isn't Josh Allen. This is a, you know, not great player. Yards per attempt, 8.6 yards per attempt over that two-year stretch with Tannehill and Smith. That was number one. Is he going to do that with Wilson and Fields? Probably not. I don't think they'll be top three over a two-year stretch in every imaginable category. However, I thought the quarterbacks that Smith had in Atlanta – were honestly the worst in the league over that three-year stretch. Just completion percentage and accuracy, watching them on tape, inexperience, over the hill with Matt Ryan. Mariota's not a good player. He got stuck with him for a long time. Easily, in my opinion, the least accurate passers over a three-year stretch. So can Wilson be Tannehill-esque? Yeah, I know he can. That doesn't mean he's going to be top three in every major category, but that's what we saw not long ago. So I mean to tell you that, and I think that's something you should be excited about. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up to minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs in a, in in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team, and remember to use promo code Believe, capital B L E A V, for fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. I'll switch gears a little bit back to team building stuff. So the Steelers draft, they have number 20, they have 51, 
They have 84. They have 98, which is also a third round pick. And they have 119. They also have 178 and 195. So to me, 178 and 195 aside, I think you got five legit picks. I'm just going to call them. That's five picks in the top 119, including three or three on day two. So I think you can look at those five picks sort of for needs. And what I mean by that is, well, you better get a center in one of those top five picks. You better get X in one of those top five picks where the last two could be, ah, give me a linebacker that's going to maybe Mark Robinson type pick that's going to be a special teamer and maybe develop. But if we don't think a linebacker there, so be it. Make it a safety or tight end or running back or whatever. But I do think you have five picks that you can look at for needs. Now, to take this a step further, they also have – extra picks in 2025 on day three if they were interested in trading up or down. Which brings me to this. I very much believe this is how things are going to go for the Steelers in terms of the team building through the draft. I don't want to say I'm going to guarantee it, but I'm going to give you a 90% certainty that some sort of free agent, or not free agent, veteran wide receiver will be on the Steelers team. Could it be Tyler Boyd or Josh Reynolds that doesn't cost you a draft pick? Very well could be. Those guys are NFL players. You can trot them out there and be fine. They're better than Allen Robinson. Okay. I mean, you can live with that. Plus, I don't think you're going to play as much 11 under Arthur Smith with three, with three receivers as you have in the past. That's for sure. Could it be Brandon Ayuk that digs into those picks? or another big-time guy that's going to cost you picks. Maybe. However, I feel like this team with those five real picks, I'm calling them, those legit picks that you can go get needs addressed. And that doesn't mean they're going to be first-year starters or eight-year starters or anything like that. But you have those five real picks. I really, really believe that – Four of those five spots, including if you sign a a receiver, are going to be another receiver, a corner of some sort, but probably one that's slot capable. Um, Deontay, Dante Jackson is not a slot, contrary to popular belief. So they really need a slot corner. They've got maybe as many as four good outside guys, but they need a slot capable corner. So I think you're going to get a wide receiver. I think you're going to get a corner. I think you're going to get a center. And I think you're going to draft an offensive tackle. So, again, we said they had five real picks. And I think there'll be a veteran receiver in the mix by then. Now, that leaves you one extra. My guess is that extra real pick, legit pick, is either going to be a quarterback. It's developmental. Maybe Spencer Rattler or Pratt from Tulane, or there's a lot of examples, or a defensive tackle, you know, a defensive lineman somewhere along the mix. And maybe that D tackles your second pick overall or third pick overall. Just couldn't believe he's there. I I mean, I'm not exactly going to tell you what order these are going to come in, but I'm going to tell you this. I think the ideal way to maximize this situation with your first two picks, and this is in some way not my style, But I can promise you, and I will put this list together, that I have more than 20 names that I'm very, very comfortable drafting in the first round. I bet I come up with like 25, some of which are going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. and Caleb Williams, but they count. I mean, they're going to come off the board and those picks will fall because of it. So I really think you can move from 20 – back to maybe 25, definitely to 23, maybe 26, 27, and still take an offensive tackle in round one. Like Mims is the one I keep coming back to, but maybe it's Guyton. Maybe it's, you know, the dude at Washington. I mean, see what's available. But Mims seems like the one most likely. But I think there will be, your first pick will be an offensive tackle. Because I think this is a smart front office that understands 
money and value positions extremely well. And offensive tackles are so hard to find. And this draft is providing them for you at top 20, top 25. So I think you could stick and pick at 20 and get a tackle. Maybe that's Latham. Wow, that'd be great. Or you go back to 24, take Mims, and also pick up another one of these extra real picks. You know, like I kept talking about those five real picks. Well, maybe that number becomes six real picks and goes down to five after you check the box for offensive tackle. Now, this is the part I don't like and I think is playing with fire a little. But then I will probably want to trade up in the second round to go get, get Zach Frazier, you know, because I think Powers Johnson, Barton from Duke, they're going to fall in the first round. Now, you might want to get to like the 10th pick in the second round for Frazier. You know, I hate doing those things because you don't want to set your, yourself up for, I need this player or bust. So I wouldn't go crazy with that. But I would also consider if that doesn't work out for Frazier, the end of this real pick run, the dude at Penn State, the dude at Wisconsin, um, Limmer from Missouri. There's some mid-round centers that I like better now than I did a month ago. Now, that doesn't mean they're the answer, the end-all, be-all. But you could do that, and then you could get on the phone immediately with Connor Williams, who's a really good center. He's just injured and who knows when you get them to sure up the middle of that offensive line. So that's just my prediction. I, I want you to look at the rest of the off season through that lens that let's assume there's going to be a receiver. And I know this is a big assumption, but I'm going to assume their first round pick is a offensive tackle because this class is just giving you lemons. So just keep making lemonade out of that. After that, you have a lot of firepower, especially if you trade down a few spots in the first round, you know, then have six real picks, as we like to call them, for four needs. You know, that gives you a lot of flexibility, too. Maybe you get the extra quarterback that you didn't count on, develop them, go from there, whatever. Or just a one pick that ends up being best player available. I like, can't believe that linebacker was there. I had to take him. Which is always a nice position to be in. So... I'm in a nice position to be in here in Florida. I hope you are as well. We will talk soon. Adios. Adios.